Get ready for awesomeness. We're about to explore five more useful features for your favorite Google products. Hi, my name is John Silwash. I help teachers and students use Google products in the classroom. I want this video to blow you away with some awesome features for your favorite Google products. That's why I have invited two of my favorite YouTubers, Sam Carey and Tom Gibson from the new EdTech Classroom YouTube channel to join me. Together, we're going to share our five top tips, hidden features to help you use Google products in your classroom more effectively. Let's head over to Sam for tip number one. Thanks, John. I'm super excited to be here on your channel. You know, as you, Tom, and I were planning this collaborative script, it actually made me think about a super useful feature in Google Docs for teachers. I'm sure you already know how great Google Docs is for collaboration. It's what allowed all of us to write this script even though we live in different locations and had to write it at different times of the day. But there's something kind of annoying about collaborating in Google Docs that can definitely cause headaches for teachers. And that's the fact that it's nearly impossible to know who wrote what on a Google Doc. So if you have like four students collaborating on a document together, one student may have done most of the work and there's really no way of knowing. Take this script for example. I'm noticing that right now at this part of the script, I'm supposed to say that everything I learned from Google Docs, I learned from John. And I'm also supposed to tell everyone that they should subscribe to John's YouTube channel. I swear I cannot remember writing that. And up until recently, there was really no way of knowing for sure who did write that. But now check this out. I'm gonna highlight that part of the text, right click, then I'm gonna click show editors. And there, ah, it turns out I didn't write that. John did. So you can see how this feature would obviously be very useful for students to know who wrote what on a collaborative document. And also of course for teachers just to know exactly who contributed to that document. Oh, and actually I should say that John taught me about this feature. So it's not far from the truth that he taught me a lot that I know about Google Docs and you should subscribe to his channel if you haven't already. Thanks Sam, that's a great update to Google Docs. I wanna talk about Gmail for a minute. Anything we can do to improve our efficiency in managing, sorting, finding, and sending email is great. Gmail has a massive search bar right at the top of your inbox. Most of you are using that search bar to search for a person's name or a keyword, but there are some really helpful advanced search parameters I'd like to show you. My absolute favorite is very simple, has colon attachment. This will only show you emails that contain an attachment. Now I've got way too many results here, so I wanna further refine this. I don't wanna see any emails that have Google Meet attachments or Google Calendar attachments. And so I'm gonna to add to my search minus Meet and minus Calendar. That will exclude any messages that contain those keywords. Now we can also sort and search for our messages by their status, so I can type is unread or important. If you love labels in Gmail, you can focus your search on one of your existing labels. To do that, simply type in and the first few words or letters of your label. Hit the enter key and there you go. Speaking of managing and organizing things, let's head over to Tom for a really great Google Drive tip. Our next tip is found in Google Drive and it's the ability to have one document available in multiple places in your Google Drive. So let's say I have a year at a glance folder that's shared with admin or other teachers and I have a year at a glance document for all of my classes. And then if I wanna look at my pre-algebra one, you can see all of my units for pre-algebra that I'm going to have. Now, if I go back to my drive, I also have a pre-algebra folder with all of the actual documents that I plan on using and teaching throughout the year. It would be really nice to have that year at a glance folder available in this pre-algebra folder as well. Now I could make a copy of the original document, but then if I make any changes to the copied version, those changes are not gonna be reflected in the original version unless I go and make the changes there too, which is super inefficient. But I can have that same document available in my pre-algebra folder if I create a shortcut. So let's go back to that original document in my year at a glance. I'm gonna right click on my pre-algebra year at a glance and I am going to add a shortcut to drive. 
And now I just say where exactly would I like to be able to access this file. And so in this case, I want it available in my pre-algebra folder. So then I'm going to add the shortcut. So now let's hop over to the pre-algebra folder and you'll see the pre-algebra year at a glance document there, but you'll notice that the doc icon has a little curvy arrow on top of it. And that's to denote that this is a shortcut. And so when I open this document, it is actually opening up that original document. And so let's say I make a change. Maybe I decide, you know what? I'm gonna teach exponents first this year and then I'm gonna be teaching integers after that. And let me make this change. Let's say unit one is now exponents and unit two is integers. Now, let me go back to my actual year at a glance folder and my pre-algebra year at a glance document. Well, go look at that. Exponents is first and integers is second. And you can see I am on the document right now because I did not open a copy of the document, I actually opened that original document when I clicked on that shortcut. And I can create as many shortcuts as I want. I can make this document available in multiple places in my Google Drive so I can access it a lot easier. And so that is how you have a document available in multiple places, but what if I want fonts in those documents that are not available in this default list? What could I do? Tom, I can tell that you are a very organized teacher, but yes, we do need to work on your font game. It looks like you're just using the default Arial font for this entire document. Let's change that. Google Docs comes pre-installed with the most basic fonts, Times New Roman, Arial, things like that. But you have access to hundreds of additional web safe fonts. Let's install them into um, our account. I'm gonna click in the font menu and select more fonts. This will take you to the font gallery where there are literally hundreds and hundreds of fonts that you can install into your Google account. They'll be available for any Google document you create in the future. Now, there's a lot of fonts here, so it's really helpful to use some of these drop downs. For example, if you're making a poster, you might wanna uh, sort by display fonts. These are really bold fonts for easy legibility. If you are looking for something uh, for readability and dense text, you probably want to consider a serif font. We can look at those. And Google is adding fonts to this list all the time. So the last filter is popularity and allows you to sort by different criteria, including date added. So we can go ahead and see some of the fonts that Google has most recently added, some new ones to discover. Now on the right side of this page, you'll see the fonts that are currently available in your Google documents. And sometimes this list can get a little long. So if you, you see a font, you're like, yeah, I don't really use that one. You can remove it from the list and that just makes it easier for you to find your favorite fonts. I want to take this opportunity to introduce you to a font that you may not uh, have seen before. It's called Lexend. And it's not the most beautiful font, but it has been scientifically created to improve reading comprehension by up to 20%, which is pretty impressive. So Tom, I'm going to go ahead and change your document to utilize uh, this font. This will help all of the students in your classroom know what to expect uh, when they take your class this coming year. We've got one more Google Docs tip from Sam. Let's head over and hear more about it. I know that a really common way for teachers to use Google Docs is to do some writing about research that they just conducted. So just picture for a moment that I was assigned a research project and I chose to research about one of my favorite topics, YouTube, and naturally, I chose to research one of my favorite YouTubers, John Sowash. So you can see that I've started to write up my report but I'm also missing some key information. For example, I want to have a fact in here about how many Chromebooks there currently are in circulation, in education, because I know that John is a Chromebook expert. Now, I could of course just go up and open a new tab, but we also know that for students, it can start to get tricky when they have to do a lot of tab management. And fortunately, that's not necessary. So down here on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, you'll see this little icon for the Explore tool. Now, if I click on that, I can actually do my web search directly here. So here I'm going to search how many Chromebooks are in education. I should probably spell that correctly. And then I can see, wow, there are apparently over 40 million Chromebooks in education. So here I can add that fact over 40 million. And then another cool thing about the explore tool is I can go right here to the end of the sentence. And then if I click that quotation mark, 
it's actually going to pull this in as a citation. So I'm just gonna click cite as a footnote and there you'll see that it's brought in a footnoted annotation. So it's a really simple and effective way to scaffold citation generation for students. Now, in addition to web content, I can also pull in images using the Explore tool. So let's say that I also wanted to have an image about a Chromebook to pull in here. It looks like just based on the previous search, there are already lots of great ones. I think I'll go ahead and pick this one. So I'm gonna click this and click insert. And now just like I was able to quickly pull in a citation for the website, I can also click that image and that will automatically pull up the web page where the image came from. I can also click copy link here and then actually paste the link below as a way to also emphasize the image citation. So again, it's just an effective way to scaffold this idea that students should be citing all of their resources. Something else I'd like to do here is pull in the link to John's book, The Chromebook Classroom. I know I have this already in some notes in my Google Drive, but I don't really want to go up and search in a new tab. And with the Explore tool, I don't have to do that either. So you'll see right here, there's also a tab for Drive. I can click that, I can easily pull up my notes that I took for this research paper, double click that. And looks like right in here, I already have the link for John's book, The Chromebook Classroom. So I'm gonna go back here and I'm going to paste it to add it. So ultimately the Explore tool just helps make finding things a little bit easier and reduces the need for students to be doing all their own tab management. Now you may have noticed that the title of this video is five more Google tips for teachers. And that's because Sam, Tom and I filmed another video with five more tips that you can watch over on the new EdTech Classroom YouTube channel. Click this link up here if you'd like to check that video out. Make sure you subscribe when you visit their channel. Sam and Tom have lots of great tips for using technology in the classroom.